Thank you. It's, it's great to be back in Portland and back in the Northwest, where I lived for 10 years before heading south to California. I was on a speaking tour of the East Coast and got, a, to my surprise, um, no less than uh, six engagements in North Carolina. And it was uh, impressive, both the turnout and the energy of, of, of activists and what many people consider to be a conservative state. I, uh, when I was, I was there, I went to the uh, basement of the uh, old uh, graduate library there. And there was a photo exhibit of the history of the University of North Carolina, which is the um, oldest state university in the country. And for the 1960s, they had a picture of Moratorium Day, 1969, um, out in the area they call the pit, outside the um, student union there. And front and center was this 12-year-old boy with a kind of shaggy hair and a paisley shirt, the style of that period, holding up what seems almost like a prophetic sign, which said, U.S., get out of Vietnam, stay out of the Middle East. Um, that 12 year old was me. I, um, <clears throat> even then, I, 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 could, I had a, a, a hunch that this would be the area uh, where there would be conflict, where the United States would find itself heavily involved in the future. And it has been a, a battle, if you will, to get peace and human rights activists involved. And I'm just very thankful that there are organizations that are new organizations that are addressing um, uh, this issue, in, in particular the, the um, uh, two groups that are serving as co-sponsors that deal particularly with Israel and Palestine, but also the mainstream, if you will, of the peace movement. And that wasn't always easy. In fact, I, I, uh, I was mentioning the last... Uh, event that I was invited to by Oregon Peace Institute, the invitation was rescinded because they felt if I was talking about the Middle East on the eve of the 1992 election, it could hurt the chances of Elizabeth I, who had been uh, director of the Oregon Peace Institute in a closely fought uh, race back when she was considered a progressive. Um, <clears throat> but. <clears throat> It, uh, it ends up they did, they apologized and invited me to come back after the election, but I was to be on a panel only if there were at least two people who were supporting the Israeli government to sort of challenge the uh, pro-peace uh, position that I, I, I had taken, I was taking. And I, I think it, it shows we've come a long way that uh, Oregon Peace Institute and other the more mainstream peace groups are not shying away from addressing the Middle East. Uh, that are recognizing just how important um, this issue is. And I th think we have a particularly important role to play. And I say this for a number of reasons. First of all, we don't have as, quite as much ideological baggage to deal with in certain ways as some other peace movements in the past, where some elements of the peace movement were um, did not just oppose the war, but actually supportive of the other side. Um, this time, nobody supports the other side. Uh, and in many ways, this is more of a pure anti-war movement. And that is a strength. Um, Saddam Hussein or whatever, that, that there's a, um, actually, I mean, they're not, you know, these aren't the Sandinistas, okay? I mean, Sandinistas had their fault, but they were doing a lot of positive things. It's, many of us were, were feeling, um, uh, you know, at least, at least some critical support of, uh, but again, this is certainly not the case in, in the Middle East. Um, there's also, and, and this is, I think, real important, this is the most important piece here, is that there has never, to a degree I've never seen before, there is a real convergence between those in the uh, peace and human rights community who have approached issues of U.S. foreign policy from a perspective of ethical, moral issues such as human rights, international law, nonviolent means of conflict resolution and the like. And on the other hand, those whose priority and only role focus is the national security of the United States. 
Because while the United States has certainly done immoral and illegal things in the third world before, the Vietnamese and Nicara Nicaraguans didn't fly airplanes into buildings. That is to say that we're recognizing that policies the United States pursues overseas has created a backlash that in this era of mega-terrorism, of weapons of mass destruction and the like, could indeed be used against us. And that what I have been trying to emphasize uh, in, my, in my book Tinderbox and in, in talks I've been giving around the country, that there is no contradiction between a policy of the United States based on these ethical and legal principles that we claim to believe in anyway, and our own national security interests. The, just to, to illustrate uh, what I mean by this, uh, CNN uh, on the day of the September 11th hijacking insisted on showing over and over and over again a small group of Palestinians who were actually celebrating the attacks. Uh, they were certainly only a tiny minority of Palestinians. Most Palestinians were as horrified of, as, any, as anybody else was. Yet in a certain way, I, mean, I don't think they're alone in the developing world in having a perverse sense of satisfaction that for the first time the United States really knows what it feels like to lose thousands of innocent civilians in an act of political violence. That's certainly not new to the Palestinians or the people of Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Chile, East Timor, Angola, Iraq, Lebanon, I could go on. Not in small part because of U.S. foreign policy. Seeing those heart-rending scenes of anguished New Yorkers holding up these oversized pictures that are missing loved ones were a striking similarity to the families of Los Desaparecidos that disappeared, um, victims of U.S.-backed uh, military juntas in Latin America during the 70s and 80s, uh, regimes that kidnapped and murdered thousands of dissidents, mostly people college age in their 20s, never to be seen again. There's <clears throat> We're told that we would, the United States is prepared to strike out at terrorists and governments which support them. Yet, Middle Eastern governments are not the only governments that have supported terrorism. One of the uh, people at my uh, talks earlier this afternoon was a, a local school teacher um, who lost his brother to a uh, terrorist, uh, state-sponsored terrorist. His name is John Linder. His brother Ben was a uh, young engineer working in an appropriate technology project, a microdam system, in Nicaragua during the 1980s. And he was ambushed and shot to death at close range by a group of Contras, um, a, a terrorist organization <laughs> organized, <coughs> funded, armed by our own government, an uh, organization that in its eight years of fighting is responsible for more civilian deaths than Al-Qaeda. It's ironic, uh, we also think of course of um, the Costa Rican government's outstanding warrant for um, an American rancher by the name of John Hull, who was I was on the CIA payroll at a time of a, a terrorist bombing at a press conference which killed five journalists. 